Hey everyone, welcome back to Dev Radio, where we bring you experts. We talk about really interesting topics in the space of development and Azure. Today, we have Stephen Helwig, who is a cloud architect manager. Stephen, did I get your title right? Yeah, that's correct. Awesome. Hey, as always, we got Matt. Hey, Matt. And uh, what we're Stephen, you were talking to me about different um, resiliency options with um, app services um, the last time we chatted. And I, I'd love for you to share some of the diagrams and visuals you sure. share because um, I think they're going to be really interesting to our audience. So, Stephen, welcome to the show. Um, love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Sydney, as you're some, uh, uh, a cloud architect manager here at Microsoft, and uh, that gives me the opportunity to manage a team of very highly cloud solution architects. They work with our customers on designing resilient applications, making sure that the workloads that they move into Azure are designed for resiliency, uh, are cost effective, and um, and really are the best that they can be. I, I happen to manage a team of data architects, but my background is in app dev. And so we were discussing you know, resilient web applications. And I have a, a video on my YouTube channel that goes through a four-part series on how to design a resilient web application with a SQL backend in Azure. And what I'd like to do is kind of take you uh, through some of the considerations for making a quick and easy resilient web application across regions in Azure. Does that sound good? Ooh. Yeah, that sounds great. And for everybody else, we're going to have that link in our description box. So you can go ahead and click that and go to this channel. I even have the link to the playlist um, for specifically around web app resiliency. So um, definitely um, follow up after this session. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So let me get into it. And I, I'm kind of have a blank slate here and I'm going to, I'm going to do some drawing on this blank slate and I have slides that I can go into, but um, quickly, as I look into this, what I'm, what I'm showing you here is the uh, two regions in Azure. And if you're familiar with Azure, we have over 50 regions around the world. And I've picked out just two regions here, a region in the east of the US and the west of the US. And on this left side here, I have, um, I have some icons that I'm going to be using. Okay. Uh, and so if we're thinking about deploying a web application, one of the easiest things we can do is let's just think about an end user, right? So we have an end user here that is going to our application. And, uh, and then we want to connect to a web app, right? So we're going to put a little box here in East US. And we have an end user. They're going to connect into our web application. And that web application is going to have a database, right? So we'll go with SQL. This can be a NoSQL database like Cosmos. But for, for this specific use case, we're going to go with something like Azure SQL, right? So we have a server, we have a database, we have East US, and we can just draw some quick connections, right, between the various pieces and parts. We'll grab one in here, you know, coming into here, and then we're, the application is talking directly to the database, right? And this is, this is one of the simplest setups you can have to get an, an application up and running. But if there is any kind of failure, and there can be failures for any reason, right? If there's any kind of failure here, or say there's one here, your application is down, right? There's no way for you to still keep your users active, right? And so there's some things you can do to help with that. And one of those is a multi-region deployment. So if we think about a multi-region deployment, you would take uh, your same code, and I would then deploy my code over here into West US. So now my code is in two regions, and I would you know, maybe I'll deploy my database as well, but we'll get to that. I'm just going to put it here. Okay. So I have my, my code and my database deployed, but how do I route my users? Whether it's on the front end where the web app sits or on the back end of the database, how do I, how do I route my users? So the first thing I'm going to do is use something called Traffic Manager. And we have another service as well called Front Door, and they, they, while they're slightly different, they do similar things. And we, we have a great link, and we can put this link in the description that goes through a flow chart of when you would choose Traffic Manager versus when you would use Front Door. When I think about it for my personal applications, things that I might be developing for myself, to me, cost is probably the most important thing. So most of the time, I'm going to use Traffic Manager because it's cheaper. Uh, but there are some amazing benefits of Front Door. And if you're designing uh, enterprise applications, chances are you're going to use something like Front Door. But what Traffic Manager can do is route traffic, and it can route traffic on a bunch of different, um, uh, re for a bunch of different reasons. In this case, what we're going to really think about is an active passive deployment. And that means we're going to route all our traffic to one region, and if there's some kind of failure, then we're going to fail over to the second region. 
But the second region is passive most of the time. We're not really routing users to it. We're just, it's just there in case we have an issue, right? And the great thing about the cloud and the great thing about Azure is that you can scale down that secondary region to manage and mitigate cost, but it's still active when you do need that failover. So it's very responsive. So I have traffic manager here. I'm gonna take this and we're gonna route our users traffic. It's gonna come into traffic manager first. All right, we'll get it right in here. And then we're gonna say, you know, if all things are good, let's just go ahead and send it to East US, okay? That's sending to East US, things are rosy, there's no issues. And then, you know, something happens. Who knows, some, maybe it's an application code, maybe there's an outage for some reason, something happens to our application and we no longer can talk to it, right? And for right now, let's say that the application in West US is just talking directly to our database. And so database is good. Traffic manager detects this outage. It's, it's pinging, it's polling this web application. It detects, hey, I'm not getting a response anymore. Maybe I pushed out new code just to this region and now that code is not working. Perfect. What it'll do is it'll take that traffic and then it'll now route it into the next region. So we're gonna grab here and boom, our traffic's up and running in the next region. All right, awesome. We just were able to have an outage of three minutes as opposed to an outage of hours where we had to maybe spin up code in a different region or you know, you know, know, if we're on premises, we had to maybe like move over to new hardware or something of that nature. So that's one type of outage. We had an outage in the web application, traffic manager did its job and routed us to the secondary region. But what if we have a database outage? One of the great benefits of Azure SQL database is that it brings some of those resiliencies from the SQL server um, application or the SQL Server implementation that we have and, and gives us failover groups. And part of the failover groups is something that's known as a failover group listener. And I'm going to just take this and move this off here for now. <clears throat> that failover group listener acts almost like a traffic manager, but for our database, right? Mm -hmm. And so instead of our web applications talking directly to SQL, they talk into the failover group listener. And that failover group listener says, this is my primary database right now, right? You tell it which one is primary. So in this case, the primary database will be East US and our web applications talk directly to the failover group listener. So we have uh, the West as well. Talking into this failover group listener here, okay? So we're gonna, you know, we'll remove this. Sorry. There we go. And we'll take this out. And this is what our application would look like under normal circumstances, right? Traffic's routing to east, web database is up, is working great, no issues at the database, right? So now all of a sudden, I have an issue with my database. My database in east is no longer responsive, right? And there's a set of, uh, one thing I wanted to point out real quick, and I actually neglect to do this, is there's replication that is occurring, right? So this is our primary database here, but it's actually replicating all of the transactions to the database in the other region. So they're in a they're in a failover pair, basically. So um, as you're writing transactions to this East US database, it's failing over, and I will tell you that failover, failover is our, or um, replication, excuse me, is almost instantaneous in Azure SQL DB. There's some, you know, there's a five minute window that they say you can, it can take for transaction to replicate and maybe under heavy load, it could take that much. But generally under my testing, it is very, very fast. And so you're seeing the trans transactions replicate from East US to West US too. So, so that's kind of one of those situations where it's like eventually consistent yes. technically, but in practice, you could treat it like it's a uh, synchronous. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've tried to run examples where I write a record really quick to East and then go over to West and see if it's not there. And every single time that record is already waiting for me. So <laughs> it's just really a testament to how quick the, the backplane is of, of Azure of, of transferring those records. Um, so here, let's say that that East US database has failed, has, has had an issue. Well, now the fail Azure SQL DB will execute a failover and then point the the records now to west us right and then this replication relationship when it uh when the database in east us is back up the replication relationship will then adjust and start replicating back to east us right so here we've gone over uh what happens if my web app fails what happens if my uh my sql database fails right so we've covered those two 
Now, if I were to have a full regional outage, both things can fail over independently, right? So if my web app fails here, then sure enough, traffic manager will fail me over. And then uh, my, my web app in West US, if the database fails, then SQL will then, the failover group listener will then fail over. And so my West US uh, web app would be writing to my West US database. So that's just a that's just a really easy, clean, um, you know, active passive failover scenario with a web application and a and a SQL database. Uh, that's pretty that's pretty interesting and exciting to me. We definitely have to get you back on another time to talk through traffic manager a little bit in depth. It's one of those really cool things. I think it's uh, heavily misunderstood. I can't tell you how many times I'm at a conference and somebody asks me, how do I do load balancing and traffic manager? Yeah. And I say, let's take 15 steps back yeah. <laughs> and talk about what traffic manager really does. I love to really talk about that. You know, the, the, the funky stuff it does with uh, domains and redirects um, to, to pull off. Um, we can do at um, such a, a economic price point. But Stephen, you know, thank you so much for coming on and showing this to us. Um, we we definitely have links to the rest of your series where you go more in depth. Anything you want to um, get people excited about or tell them to look forward to when they go look at your playlist? Yeah, I mean, there's this is a four part series, and let me switch back here. Um, so this is a four part series that will, uh, it actually might be five parts because there's an intro, that will go through not only each one of the architectures, but we'll show you how to deploy this architecture in Azure. And once you've deployed it, we'll go through some testing scenarios and testing failover. Um, so that's one of the series. I have a couple other videos as well, just about some Azure 101, like how to navigate the portal and some other um, basics around Azure, and then some videos around Azure Synapse if you're inter interested in getting started in Azure Synapse. I have a video that shows you how to quickly uh, create a, um, a POC environment that will autom automatically shut down. Well, again, all really exciting. Stephen, thank you for coming on again. Um, we're, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do. We're going to keep bringing CSAs. We're going to keep talking through good things. We're definitely going to have you back on, Stephen, to um, talk, about, <laughs> talk about traffic manager. So some of these other interesting, um, really um, heavy dev three L300, mm -hmm. L400 topics that I feel like people um, – the, the YouTube channel is called Dev Radio that I think yeah. people really want to hear. So uh, thanks again for your time. Yeah, yeah, thanks so much. This, this is the first time I actually learned about uh, the failover group listener. I'm a little embarrassed to say, but uh, I definitely learned something today. Thanks so much, David. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the great features of SQL uh, database, Azure SQL database, which is our path <laughs> service that we brought from SQL Server about two years ago. And it certainly simplified my life with customers and simplified our <laughs> So looking forward to coming back on and talking ab yeah. about more of the uh, things that are important to devs and, and how you can build those resilient web applications in Azure. Awesome. Well, we'll see you all next time. All right. Thanks so much.